The potential acquisition of Zain in Saudi is exactly uh, core to our growth strategy. Uh, you've got to be strong in your home markets before you start going globally or regionally. So if you look in the Middle East, uh, we operate in Jordan through mobile, uh, through a company called Umnia and will equal second market share. In Yemen, we have 27% of the market leader, uh, three and a half million uh, customer base companies. So if you look at Batelco, we position ourselves, our growth strategy has been to develop a very strong footprint in the Middle East. Saudi market is the largest and highest growing market, telco market in the Middle East. We operate there through a smaller company for YMX services, but the opportunity to acquire Zain is very critical to a growth strategy because in many respects, a lot of customers travel between Saudi and Bahrain. Our two competitors operate in that market and we don't. So part of our growth strategy is to tap into the biggest market in the Middle East, which is, as a, which is a KSA. Uh, years ago, we tried to bid for the third license, but the prices offered at the time were very, very high. Now the opportunity has come up. We have teamed up with another listed company, Kingdom, and we're discussing the acquisition. We're in the middle of the acquisition as we speak, but it does exemplify the strategy we are pursuing, growing in the Middle East and also growing the size of our customer base. Should we be successful, today Zane is about 8.3 million customers. Uh, today, Batelco Group is about just over 10 million customers. So in a relatively short period of time, we can actually double our customer base. And again, the economies of scale, the ability to deliver new services to customers across a 20 million customer base will be very beneficial to both Zane and to ourselves. So our strategy, uh, Zane KSA is a great example of a growth strategy. Good question about challenges. Um, everybody believes that um, it's exciting to go and chase acquisitions um, and you know everybody believes that when you do the deal you know that's the um, the, the climax uh, well from our experience we know that that's only the very beginning and we have done a number of deals now in India in Jordan in various other countries in Kuwait in um, uh, as I mentioned in Yemen and in, in uh, Saudi as well before uh, the easiest thing to do in many respects is to actually conclude the acquisition the hardest thing to do is actually run, operate and grow the business. Because a lot of times the assumptions you make in your business case and reality, uh, which you don't control in a market, for example, India is a good opportunity right now, where the landscape is changing dramatically from regulatory reform, from government investigations, from very lower uh, revenues per customer. So you're coming across challenges that you probably anticipated, but sometimes you never anticipate the extent. For example, in a couple of markets we entered, we thought the average revenue per customer would be 100 points. Within a few months, it collapses to 40 points. Dramatic collapse. So there are challenges. Uh, and if I can summarize them, first of all, having a great management team to run the acquisition you're involved in. Uh, very, very important challenge. We've been fortunate because we have acquired right now, we've done four different acquisitions in four different countries with slightly different cultures to the one. But I think if we've managed to successfully uh, work with these companies, we go down the path of not imposing our policies, but imposing best practice, benchmarking operations, looking at what they do well. And a lot of times the, the company that invested, we learn from them. So it's not all, all one way traffic. If you have a philosophy of best practice, and benchmarking, you will find great practices across the companies you invest and then you share them with other companies. So to us, yes, there is a little bit of, of cultural difference, but these companies are run by business people, by marketing people, by finance people. The principles are very similar, whether you're in one country or the other. Yes, we have to win over the people, and sometimes uh, we work very much in a consultative way, but sometimes also we have to dictate what we believe may be the principles when it comes to best practice. But we approach everything through facts, through figures, through research, through rational debate, through dialogue, and we find out that probably 95% of the issues get resolved. Emotion and pure intuition um, when you're running complex businesses is not enough. Uh, in a growth market that everything is growing, being very intuitively and, and just sort of saying yes and no simply probably works. But when markets are mature, you have to make massive investments. You have a lot of competition, details, paying attention to details, listening to your management team, 
challenging to those management teams, sharing with them practices from other markets, ex you know, asking them to build different scenarios. So we go through a lot of professional debates, but having a great relationship with a management team, very important, culturally and professionally, giving them freedom to operate, very important, but at the same time also holding them accountable for performance. So we're very much performance driven and um, when things don't work according to our targets, we do have to go through a lot of please explain and basically finding ways to again re-energize and regrow. Yeah.